All right, so given two cornered systems, let's call them xi and yi, and a robot cornered frame which is simply rotated around i's z axis, so we put an xr here and a yr here. We just learned how to write down or derive the rotation matrix that rotates a point from the robot frame into the inertial frame. And so that was a cosine of alpha sine alpha 0 minus sine alpha cosine alpha 0, 0, 0, 1, which is a rotation around the z-axis. And you can derive that by calculating the scalar product of each basis vector in the robot corner system with each basis vector in the inertial frame. And we just did that in the previous lecture. Now, how does such a rotation matrix work? Let's consider any point in the robot frame. Let's call it P. And we put a little R here, so everyone knows it's in the robot frame. And let's look at how it's defined in the robot frame. So we get an X coordinate, which I will call PX, and a Y coordinate, which I will call PY and they're all in R. Let's put a little R here. Now what we're interested in is the actual coordinate of that thing in the inertial frame. So what is Px of i and what is Py of i? Now I claim that you can actually do this by using the rotation matrix, multiplying with your point and what you get is going to be this point in the frame i. Let's do a quick sanity check here. We have a 3 by 1 vector, we want a 3 by 1 vector, and we have a 3 by 3 matrix. So actually putting that rotation matrix in front of that vector is the way to go. Now, how is this working? Now, let's exercise a full example here and write down that PR is actually consisting of the components P, X, P, Y, and P, Z. And I put a little R here. It's getting complicated, but better safe than sorry. Now, what happens is, in order to calculate this, I have to multiply each row with this vector element-wise. So I do this. It's cosine of alpha times P, X, R, then minus sine alpha P, Y, R, and 0. Um, for the second row, it's going to be sine alpha P, X, R, plus cosine of alpha P, Y, R, and 0 times this, 0 times that, and 1 times this. So, as expected, as we rotate around the Z axis, the Z coordinate remains actually unchanged. Now, what are we actually doing here? So let's recall that alpha, the vector, is actually the angle between the two vectors of the that describe the coordinate system. So we have an alpha here. We have the same alpha there. And Px is actually a scalar of that length here. That's Px in R. Now, if you draw the full triangle, you can easily see that this point here is given by cosine of alpha, which is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is Px. So we can say Px times cosine of alpha is actually this adjacent. Now we're getting this point. Which point do we actually want? We want this point. So we see that Px times cosine alpha is actually a little too big. Now how do we calculate this little value here? Now if you look at the coordinate system you might see that this distance is actually that distance here. Because everything is shifted a little bit to the left due to the rotation around the z-axis, which is also counterclockwise. Now how do we calculate this little piece? So we write down sine alpha 
is the opposite, so little piece divided by the hypotenuse. And what's the hypotenuse? It's PY. So the little piece is sine alpha times PYR, and that's exactly what we have here. We have the cosine of alpha times this piece here, PX, and then we subtract sine alpha times this piece here. So we are good to go with this one. Now we can do the same thing for the Y coordinate. Let's look at this. So the first entry that we have to calculate is sine alpha times PX, which is this little piece here. But that's actually not enough. So we need this little piece here, which is given by cosine of alpha times PY of R. So cosine of alpha times PY of R is this piece here, I'm sorry, and sine alpha of PX of R is actually that piece here. So this thing here consists of that plus this. Now we have this entry and we don't have to worry about PZ and now you can see how the rotation matrix can be used to express a point that is given to you in one coordinate system in another coordinate system. There's only one thing that is missing now. So if you have a coordinate system I, again, most of the time the robot coordinate system is actually somewhere else and not right at the origin. So let's make this again red. So this is our robot coordinate frame. And we just talked about how we can calculate the rotation between the I-frame and the R-frame. And we talked earlier about how we can express the translation. So let's say we have a translation from R to I, and we have a rotation from R to I. And the translation is a 3 by 1 vector, and the rotation is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, together these two make up what we call a frame. And so in this case, the robot frame R is defined by the tuple, which is given by the rotation matrix and the translation vector. And now you can go and do some arithmetic that way. So you can do things like saying I have a point Q let's say in I and I have a point uh, Q in R so this one here I can transpose one from from one to the other by putting the rotation matrix in front so we want to go from R to I and adding the translation vector from R to I. Now I can take the point Q in the reference frame R and express it in frame I. So what I have to do is I have to do a first a rotation and then a translation. Now how can we simplify this a little bit? It would be more appealing if you could say something like I want to calculate I, Q, Q in I just using a transformation matrix, which I call T, R, I. Now, how does such a transformation matrix possibly look like? One way of doing it is actually taking the rotation matrix and packaging it together with the translation matrix in a larger matrix. And so what that looks like is this. So you have a 3 by 1 column here, and you have a 3 by 3 rotation matrix. So we have a 4 by 1, a 4 by 3 matrix so far. Now what we do is we add 0, 0, 0, and 1 underneath, 
and we get a 4x4 four four matrix. Now in order to do this we have to actually extend each vector by a fourth dimension which we always set to the 1 and so we have PQX, PQY and PQZ1 equals the rotation matrix and the translation 0, 0, 0, 1 like that. Now if we look at that we do the rotation by doing the first row then we translate by X get that and we do the translation the rotation again translate by Y and we do the rotation again translate by Z and finally we have 0 0 0 so these things go away and one by one so this is actually consistent and we get a 4 by 1 vector here this is known as a homogeneous transform